it's it's been a while. I don't know when this is going to be going up, but I kind of took a week off. Sometimes you just need to, and I just had something on Sunday that had to be done, had to be done, and it took all day. And then on Monday and Tuesday, rained buckets. I cannot shoot when it rains because I depend on natural light. It just doesn't look good in here when I use my LED light alone. It just somehow doesn't do it for me. So I took three days off and then, uh, well, I, then I needed to do something else. And it is now Friday. And you know what, you guys? I kind of like it. Once in a while, you just have to do it. I did not watch any videos at all. In fact, I was speaking to Tamara on the phone. She said, oh, are you getting Lisa Eldridge's stuff? I'm like, what stuff? 40 minute video saying, you know, she's doing five palettes and she's doing five more lipsticks and had no idea. And I was okay with that. Of course, I did buy them this morning at 8.30, but it's a, uh, it was nice. So I thought I'd just do this video and maybe chat a little bit. What I'm talking about is BK Beauty reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in trying their brushes. And you know, this brand came out, I guess, three or four years ago. I really don't know. But a lot of people love the brushes, especially the foundation brush. And I said, well, sure. Thank you so much to BK Beauty. They sent me, I think it's the luxury set, 16 brushes, eight face brushes, and eight eyeshadow brushes. So I have in front of me the eight face brushes. I'm expecting something today. Here's the deal. If I hear FedEx, they don't usually actually say anything, but if I hear a box drop, we're going to just do face brushes with this video and I'll do another one with eyeshadow brushes. If I don't, then I will pull out the eye brushes, which I haven't undone yet. Here's one of them. And we'll do an eye look as well and just check them out. The palette that I'm expecting today is the new Natasha Genona. So pretty. I just don't want to do her brushes, brushes I've never tried before with a palette I've never tried before. So that's what's going on. Let's just do a rundown, shall we? <laughs> I got my notes here. So the contour foundation brush is the 101 and that is this one. You've seen everybody use these before. I have used it. Then we have the 102 is the large powder brush. Well, all of these brushes are pretty large, so let's see. Okay, large powder brush. I use this as well. And, I, and you'll see, you'll see. Then there's the 103, and this is a bronzer. And you know what? I do bronzer with a small brush, and actually a blush brush, but I use this as well. One on four tapered powder. I imagine this is just for powdering your entire face. I like to use a really small brush for that. 105 large buffer. I'm not sure. I mean, would this be for foundation or would it be for finishing powder? Mm, who knows? I really like the fact that she and many brush companies will tell you what a brush is for because that gives you a starting point as opposed to people just like, here's your brush well, I don't know how to use this brush for some reason. I think it's because I always am against the grain. If someone tells me this brush is for blank, in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna use it for something else. <laughs> but if you don't tell me what it's for, I'm like, I don't know what to use it for. <laughs> I'm weird, you guys. I'm a little bit weird. Then we have a round foundation, which is 106. Aha. Uh -huh. so, this is kind of like the Zoeva brush, but it's bigger and it's softer. Got it? So 107 flat brush, I imagine contour or maybe blush. It's interesting, there isn't a blush brush, right? And then this is 108 precision powder, and I'm guessing boop, 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 boop. So we're gonna put on a face of makeup. I'm just gonna scooch in a little bit and I'm doing the house labs and one pump. Now let me tell you a little bit about me. If you've never been here before, hello! I'm usually not this strange, but I've had a week off. Here's the deal. By the way, I, it's not that I didn't have videos to edit 
I did have the hideous videos to edit. I just didn't feel like it. I love putting on foundation with my fingers. I just feel like there's a synergy with that. And your fingers are a fantastic tool and should be used a lot. I have several foundation brushes, but none that I actually really, really love. And I'm not going to go through them all, but I, I, this one is out. This is Sonia G, which is kind of like this. This one is shorter, but they're both round ferrules. This is softer, and it feels like it might be more dense. This is dense as well, but I think the bristles are actually thinner than these bristles. But I just don't like them that much. I think I have about three or four. I have flat brushes. I have all kinds of brushes. But so many people have talked about this. Here it is. I'm just going to kind of pick up a little bit like this, right? I'm not going to waste a whole bunch because brushes absorb foundation and that means you're buying your foundation more frequently. And we're gonna give this a go. Oh, <laughs> I probably should have probably should have blown my nose first. I'm not sick, but I'm going through this weird thing where all I have to do is lower my head and my nose just runs. <laughs> it's, I think I'm somebody who gets allergies this time of year. Of course, I forget and every year I'm surprised again. So this foundation I'm familiar with. I've used it many times. It makes the skin look insane and it has really good coverage. But I feel that with the brush, I'm not getting as much coverage, which isn't to say that I couldn't build it. And I kind of like, actually, the idea that I'm covering my whole face with foundation, but have less coverage on this one, because this, to me, is a strong medium. And if I go on with my fingers, I'm not going to have that kind of versatility. You know, it's much harder to go on with less foundation with fingers for some reason. You can do it, but you won't get it all over your face. So for me, one pump all over my face. If I tried to do this with my fingers, I wouldn't be able to stretch it all over my face. That's what I mean. All right, so I think this looks very, very pretty. Now, let's just see how it builds because I do see some redness on my cheeks and I'm going to do another pump but honestly that's probably going to be too much. A half a pump probably would have been better. And this time I'm just going to stipple instead of stretch over the face because I want to keep that right around here. So I really like this brush and I'm somebody, I just explained, I don't really like brushes for foundation, but I do like this. I understand why everybody talks about it. However, around the nose and all that kind of stuff, you know, I just did that video on the rougher brushes. This rougher brush, 36, perfect for around the nose and around the lips and around the eyebrows. And I'm looking at her brushes and I'm seeing Nothing quite like that. It's, it seems like these are all powder brushes. So I'm going to go in with this rougher and just do, especially since my nose has been running, and around the lips. If you're somebody who doesn't mind getting foundation on your lips, God knows I do it all the time. It's fine, but I have a balm on my lips, so I don't want to get my balm on the foundation brush. So her brushes are synthetic and they're extraordinarily soft. Now there's also not a brush that I would use for concealer. To me, I don't really see any of these working for a concealer. And again, um, in Angie's set, there is one. I'm just going to do the Charlotte Tilbury and again do the refer. All right, so there is our base. The first thing I need to do before I put on anything else is powder the face, and I'm doing the 102 with that. And I just want to look, yeah, large powder. I have to say, you guys, um, I have a Surratt brush that I paid a small fortune for. In fact, okay, here it is. This Surratt brush, I think, was is about $260, and it's 
dense. It's so interesting. I, they're not the same shape. This is a squirrel, synthetic. They don't feel the same, but they're both soft. But for some reason, I don't like powdering with this. Now, sometimes when you when I buy something really expensive, I don't want to use it. <laughs> that could be part of it, but I don't think that's it. I'm going to do half the face with this and just talk about what I'm experiencing and seeing. I'm going into my bag, Terry. And again, I prefer to use that small Wayne Goss brush for powder because I just like to spot. But since we're going to do bronzer and a whole bunch of other things, may as well do the whole face. And... Super, super soft. And it just... Tamara told me that Kate the Great, who I love, but I, have, I haven't watched all of her videos, uh, said it's like kitten paws, and it really is. It's so soft. In fact, I would guess <laughs> if I wanted to do a lymphatic massage on dry skin without any oils, I could probably just do it with this brush. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't skip or drag. Of course, I patted on the powder first before I started moving like this, but I like the way it feels. Now, it's not making me incredibly matte, but it looks pretty. And now I'm going to do the Surat. So the Surat is shorter, and same thing, pants on first. Yeah, I feel like I get a little bit of drag with the Syrah. I cannot believe I'm about to tell you I'm feeling hot. It is so cold out. I have the door open and I'm feeling like the hair has to go up. However, I feel like I got a little more matte on the Syrah side. So I, I would say, look, the Syrah brush is expensive and it's beautiful, but for some reason there's something about it and maybe it's the cut. I feel a little bit drag, but I really don't feel drag with this one but I feel like I've got more matte with the Surat side. I'm just gonna go over. So interesting, the science of brushes. I really, really like this brush. I really, really like the foundation brush. Now, for blush, I'm not sure what to do, but I am gonna put my hair up. All right, my hair's up. It's just a little bit warm. Uh, go figure, I don't understand what's going on. It's just me? <laughs> I decided I'm not going to worry about blush because I first need to do bronzer and she does have a brush, the 103, that says it's for bronzer. Now, the one I usually use for my bronzer is this. This is from SuQ and it's a blush brush, but I love it for bronzer. And oddly enough, they're shaped very similarly. This is much smaller. Again, it's squirrel. They're both pinched ferrules and they both kind of fan out. And they both have the same cut. So it's shorter bristles and rounds out, shorter bristles and rounds out. But this is much, much bigger. Now, for me, I prefer to be very strategic with where I put it. I see a lot of people just taking a big brush and going all over. And I think that can actually be appropriate from time to time, but on a regular basis, not for me. And that time is when you have a foundation that is just too light for you. So I'm going into my Victoria Beckham, which I love, and oftentimes I just use this lighter one. You're gonna hardly see it, but it just does a little something. So let's just start with the lighter one, because I do feel this foundation's a little too light for me, but you can't tell because I'm wearing a sweater, you know, high up. Let's go for it. Now, it just gives me a little something. Just so you can see it, I'm going to go through both colors. This should be a little bit darker, not too much darker. It doesn't drag. And it works lovely. I love that it's the same shape as the one that I already use. So that's really interesting. Not for every time I bronze because it's so big, but when I have the wrong color on foundation, I think good. And if you're one of those people who you really do appreciate a big bronzer brush and you like to bronze big, I think you'll like it. 
I did not powder under my eyes, I noticed when I just looked, so I'm going to take this one, which is the 108, and by the way, thank you so much for printing the numbers big enough for me to see. And again, I usually use my wing goss here, and I probably will continue to do that because it's perfect for me for what I want. But this works great under the eyes. Inner corner and lid. The skin looks really, really, really pretty. Now, I really don't have much in contour that is powder. I think the only thing I have is this Bronson Glow from Charlotte Tilbury. And I was thinking, this is my work. And this is the 107. I usually use for this the um, Surat brush, uh, not Surat, the SuQ brush or the Wayne Goss brush. I'll just turn it on its side and be very, very specific. So this works fine. It absolutely depends, as brushes do, on the size of your face and your preferences, how you like to do contour and bronzer, if you do like to do contour and bronzer. But I feel like it's too dense to use for blush brush. So that's how I would use this one, which is 107. So there are three brushes left. These two brushes are pretty much the same, I think. Round ferrules and kind of like kabuki brushes. And I guess you could buff out if you were doing a finishing powder, which, ooh, I do have a finishing powder. But I'm gonna really pound on some powder. And this same thing, I think you could use them both for foundation though, but let me get my finishing powder. Chantakai, this is the Perfect Blur Glow Powder and I'm going in with the 106. Let's see what happens I'm using the smaller brush. And the skin looks so, so pretty. I just don't want to buff because I'm afraid that it will buff off my foundation. It feels, it feels a little bit dense to me for buffing powder because I think I'll just displace stuff. I'm gonna take the bigger one and we'll try that on the other side. This one might be bigger, but it doesn't feel as dense and I don't feel as concerned, but I do think I've got more pinkness in my cheeks right now. So for me, I'm just not sure about these two brushes, but I think I feel more comfortable with this big one. This is the 104, and I suppose I could use this for blush. It, it just, it looks like a powder to me rather than a blush, but we're going to give it a try. I got this Dior blush, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, and I showed you when I got it, and I said I don't think it'll go with the eyeshadow that I got, so we'll come back to it and try it again. So let's try it today. I have no idea if these two are going to perform, because first for both, uh, let's see. It, this works fine as a blush brush. You kind of start here and go out, and because of the way it's tapered, great. You could also do it backwards, which I sometimes do. And there's a scent to the Dior Kelsabreeze. Okay, so those are the face brushes. Let's just come to conclusions with the face brushes. Blushes. Blushes. And then, and I didn't chat with you at all, and then we'll, I'll go get the eye brushes and we'll play around with that. So this, could use it as a blush brush. I feel like it's a powder brush. And again, everybody has preferences how they want to use their powder, what kind of brush works for them. And I certainly have mine. For me, I like this one is gorgeous. This is the 102. It's bigger, it's, it feels more like a, I don't know, I, I just, I just like this. This is the one I like. This works for blush. Fine. This is a little too dense for buffing out powder. So this is the 106. I think maybe you would want to do this with foundation. This is the perfect one, 107, for burp, 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 a little contour. It's a little bit dense for me, 
but again, you have to keep in mind that I have like three face brushes. Three. So I'm used to certain things. This is great for under the eyes and around the nose if you wanted to. It's more dense than what I use now, which is the Wayne Goss. This is the one I would prefer for a final buff if you want to do a final buff. It's a very foreign kind of thing to me because I just feel like I'm going to move all my foundation. This foundation brush is as fantastic as everyone says. This is the 101 and I really, really like it. And this one, the 103, the bronzer brush, fantastic if you like a big, big bronze. So I would say my favorite brushes are these. The 102 powder, the 101 foundation, and the 103 bronzer. I really, really love those. Maybe they have these three in a set together. All right, I'm going to go in the other room and unwrap the other brushes. And since my Denona didn't come, we're going to do an eye look. I think the brushes are going to be a little bit harder for me because they're smaller and I'm not going to be able to see in the numbers. And this might help. Oh yeah, really small. So this is the 101, the blended crease. It's a round ferrule and it looks a little flat because that's, you know, how it was packed. I'm a little concerned that this might be a little big. My eyes are small and they're hooded. So what works on me, very different than what works on other people. This I cannot read, but I think it's 208. It's precision angled. And look how small that is. That kind of gets me excited. I love small detail brushes because my eyes are small. This one looks like 206, which is a blending shader. This one is 207, which is a pencil blender. So I think a lot of people would use this under the eyes. But under my eyes, it would be huge. And I don't like to put anything under my eyes. It just makes my eyes look smaller. So I'm not sure how I'm going to use that. Then we have the 204, which is a smudge. I think this one, as well as the one I just showed you, right? If you're doing a liner like Victoria Beckham's liner, which is very soft and gives you a little bit of time before it sets, you could do, do, do with that. 203. So this is a shader where the other one was a blending shader. And the 202, which is Define Crease. This is a round ferrule. I just can't imagine this is going to work for me. I need a little bit more of a point. I have a MAC brush that does work like that. I'm not sure if they still make this one, and I'm not sure what number this is. I think it is 285. And this works for me because it has more of a candle tip, and I can kind of be more specific with where I want the color to be because it's pointed and almost fake, like I, I have a crease. So they're kind of similar, but this is more rounded at the top. So I'm not sure that'll work for me, but you know, we're gonna give it a try. And then this one is the 203, no, 205 contour shader. Hmm, hmm. I might have watched one of her brushes, one of her videos, but I feel like, again, you know, people will tell you this is what it's made for, but you can do anything you want. So let's just play in the Patrick Ta. So the first thing I want to do is go all over the lid with a pale color and I think the best choices are one of these. Both have round ferrules and both seem very similar. I'm going to do it here with this. So this is the 201. This color has teeny, teeny little sparkles in it, which I'm really not sure why he did that. It's interesting, she doesn't call anything a lay down brush. So I feel like you can lay down with whatever you want. Now I'm gonna take the Define Crease, which is the 202, and I'm going in with this color. Like here's my crease. Yeah, okay, this works. Yeah, this works well. Color me surprised. I, I didn't think that shape would do it for me, but it is. 
So the Patrick Ta powders are a little bit on the dry side. It's not, you know, the creamy things that we see so much of lately. Natasha Denona does them. Uh, these are a bit of a drier, but these brushes work very nicely with this formula. And yeah, that works really, really well. Okay, I like it. I like it. This works for me. So now we have something called a shader. This is the 103, and I just don't know. I think this would just be all over the lid. Like, I probably could have used this as my lay down. Let's do this color here. Now normally with something sparkly, you probably want more of a flat brush, but let's try it. Start in the inner corner, fits there really nicely, and yeah, very pretty. On the mobile lid, all right. I'm wrong, it's not called shader, it's called blending shader, and it's 206. And I like it on the mobile lid, perfect for my eyes. 203, which is this brush, it is a pinched ferrule and a kind of like a fan shape. This is called shader, and I'm going to, I guess I'm gonna go into this one initially and continue to work on giving myself a crease. Yeah, so this is a bit darker than the other shape, and for me, I'm hardly touching because I want to be so precise of the location. And you can use it this way or turn it and use it this way. So this way would be blending it, and this way would be precise placement. I like this brush as well go in with a little bit more and pull down and that's probably all I'm going to do for deepening outer corner. I do feel though that I want to blend a little bit so I'm going to go back with the 201 and just blend so the fade is really pretty here. So now I have these three detailed brushes, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to really use all of them. This ankle brush would be great for eyeliner and probably brows. This one, I just don't know how I would use this brush. It's a little too big for a pencil brush for me. And it feels like these two would have the same role for me, which is a liner kind of a situation, blend out. And maybe this I would use for, now, and I'm not sure how to use this, which is interesting because I have another brush like this from Bobbi Brown. I'm like, yeah, let's build my collection a little bit. And I got it home and I thought, I have no idea how to use this brush. I'm going to work around the lash line and go in with this color with the two or four, and that is called a smudge. A little... Oh, perfect. This is perfect for me. Perfect size for my eyes to just get a little something going right there. Love it. I told you I was going to talk to you this whole time. <laughs> I was just going to say that I have been spending my time not cleaning, not organizing, not... Uh, editing the two videos that I have <laughs> that I haven't edited yet watching Madam Secretary because I recently in the last couple of months I finally caved and got Netflix and I've watched all of The Crown and have been waiting for The Crown to come out for season five and I started watching Madam Secretary which I watched when it first came out but I, I didn't stay with it um, and I have thoughts, but The Crown came out and I watched all of it yesterday and I got some thoughts, but I don't want to offend anybody, so I'm going to keep them to myself. All right, love. Now, if I wanted to go darker, you know, I could go in with that, what is it, defined crease and that dark color and bring it up a little bit. Let's, uh, let's try. It's not that I want to do darker, it's just that I need to uh, give a little more shape to my eyes. So I think what I'm going to do is mix this with this. Yes, ma'am. 
Perfection, yes. Perfect. Now, I don't want to over blend this and, and get it all over the place, but it needs a little blend. So I'm going in with 204, which is a round ferrule. And just being very careful. I don't want to go too big with this. By the way, I'm 60, you guys. My lids are crepey. So it's not like putting on makeup when you're in your 30s or 40s. But close to it is <laughs> your 50s. Okay. Better. All right, I'm gonna leave the eyes like that. I'm going to put on some mascara and some lip and talk to you about my thoughts. All right, I did a little bit of lipstick. I did that Laura Mercier soft petal lipstick, which I love, and some mascara. And I'm still doing this one, the Cali Ray, but it, it's weird. I talked about it. <laughs> it. It doesn't fall off your lashes like other tubing mascaras, so I'm kind of like, well, what's the point? It doesn't smudge, so that's good. That's the benefit of a tubing mascara, but the reason I like tubing mascaras is they're easy to take off. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to wipe your delicate lashes, and when you get older, when you get to be my age, you start thinking about that stuff. So let's talk, you guys. The blended crease brush looks like this, and I really, really like it. The second one is the Define Crease Brush, and I was shocked. I didn't think it would do what I needed it to do, and it does. Even though it's not as pointed as the one I use from MAC, it gets in there. And again, you know, keep in mind, hooded, crepey, blind, it doesn't matter, and um, hooded, crepey, and my eyes are small. Then we have the next one is three, which they're calling a shader, and I really didn't know what to do with that one, but I think I did well with it. I don't even remember what I did, actually, with it, but I think I blended with this, and I like this. It's a pinched ferrule you can use it this way, boop, 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 or you can use it this way. You know what I mean? So that one I really like as well. The Smudge It brush, which is 204, perfect size for me for a liner brush. This one, I don't know what to do with it. It's called the Contour Shader. I have to work with it. Maybe, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, like, here, do a little something? I don't know what to do with that one. The blending shader, also, I did something with this, but I don't remember what. I think I did lay down right over the lid with this one. Or maybe I did some blending with this one. But, again, surprised, because I'm kind of like, well, I just don't know what to do with this. I found a use for it and it worked really well. This one I don't know what to do with. So this is a pencil blender. It's for people who put shadow under their eyes. I do not put shadow under my eyes. It will make my eyes look much, much, much smaller. And if I did, I have something that I prefer, which is my, I think this is Surat or SuQ, I can't remember who, but it's pointed. And this is rounded. And for me, if I wanted something under my eyes, I could just get a smaller bit with this over this. So that's my personal preference. Your eyes may vary. And then we have this teeny weeny. <laughs> Anyone else remember that Friends episode about Rachel's teeny weeny? Um, I see potential for this. It is so, so, so small. I bet that if I wanted to, I know I tried this recently, I, I just want to, I think I could probably do um, inner lining right here with powder. Let's try that. You know, in this Patrick Ta, there are two creams. I could probably do that, but I don't want to. So I'm going to take this with the darkest color, just snort away. and push it up. Mm. 
So yeah, kind of surprised because looking at them, I'm thinking, eh, that shape's not gonna work for me, but totally did. So there's three face brushes that I will use all the time. These three, when I want bronzer all over the face, this one, foundation, I finally found a foundation brush I can get next to. And I've tried a lot, and I've bought a couple of really expensive ones too. So that's great. And this powder brush, all just for all over the face, so soft. Really like that. So those are my three standouts. And then, I, you know, I just told you about the eyes. I'm, I'm just really surprised because I thought, that shade's not going to work for me. This isn't going to work for me. But I find that most of these work for me. Um, there's just two that I really have no idea what to <laughs> do with out of eight. That's not bad. So yeah, you guys, um, I hope this is helpful to you. I'm sure that, I, oh my God, I can't remember her name, Pinky Beauty. I cannot remember her name. Oh my God, no insult. It's just, I'm 60, I forget everything. I cannot remember her name, but the owner of BK Beauty, I'm no doubt, has done videos on these brushes and how to use them and all that kind of stuff. So go there for more detail, but keep in mind, if you watch my channel because your eyes are like mine, her eyes are not, you know what I mean? Very, very different. And she's probably 20 years younger than me as well, so probably not as crepey. So if you're looking for information on hooded, small, crepey eyes, I'm your gal, but if you want more details on the brushes, do check out her channel and do a little search in the search bar and you'll find more information about them. But I am very pleasantly surprised. I just, I didn't think that these would work for me and they have. And that's gonna wrap up today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope you had a little bit of fun and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart and I'm wishing you good health.